So this is the bag sort for row B. Uh, we have two bags inside of these row packages. And I have my labels for bagging up my blocks once they're sorted and my sandwich baggies. And I have all of my pens. I have a ballpoint pen, a normal size Sharpie, and a fine point Sharpie, and my trusty handy dandy stiletto for placing on the grids. And of course, I've spiral bound my Dear Jane book. So since we're on row B, I'm going to flip it to B1 and place it flat so I can work from this book. Now, <clears throat> when we open the bag up, we are going to have bunches of stuff. Okay, so we have the booklet and a bunch of little things. So I have a row bag for B1 through B6, which is the one that we're going to be sorting in this video. B7 through 13 will be the next video. And then I have a bag of cornerstones and lattices that I will set aside when I do assembly. I will put these on as I get the blocks finished so that I don't have to do it all at the end. And then I have some four and a half inch squares. How many do I have here? Lots. There's lots in this row. I got four, four and a half inch squares that are, you know, okay, what do I do with these? So the first thing you do with these is I'm going to take my fine point Sharpie, flip my booklet over to the back where it says notes, and it says exactly where the four and a half inch squares are to be used. So we have B1, B7, B11, and B12 on here. So I'm going to write one of those numbers on each one of these blocks. So B1, B1, and I'm going to set this with this bag, and then B7, B11, and B12, I will set aside with the other bag for the next video. And then it also has notes on here, talks about the B10, uh, about the center cross, and the B11, about how the entire block has shrunk slightly to applique under the four and a half inch square. We will cover that in the block prep videos. So for the booklet, you're also gonna go in the booklet and you're gonna see which ones have charts in here because this means it's been modified from the book and you'll have to work from the book or from the booklet, excuse me. So B4 has been modified. So I've put English BPP modified so I know that when I get to this point to lay out my pieces and assemble, I need to work from this booklet rather than this. And then the other one in here is B6, it's been modified. So I turn to B6 and I have modified here because it's taken away these side borders, they're not on there. So again, when you go to layout for layout and assembly, you're gonna work from the booklet on these blocks and from the book, the Dear Jane book for the rest of the blocks. So let's go back to B1. Because I've heard it's always best to start at the very beginning. So I'm going to leave this open to B4 since that's the next time I'm going to need this. And I'm going to set this booklet aside for now. So now, B1. I already know that I have a B1, four and a half inch block. And then I need to find four circles that fit those. Very, very easy. So I'm going to crack open my bag maybe, and dump out my pieces carefully, not to, not to leave any in the bag, and not to lose any of the big ones, or the little ones, excuse me. So for this, I'm going to pull out the circles. It's possible that there's different size circles in here. Maybe not. There's lots of little bars and things in here like this. So what I do sometimes is I start to make some piles of the same size shapes as I'm sorting because why not? Okay, so here's four circles. And I don't seem to have any other thing that's even close to this. So I'm going to go ahead and mark the circles with B1. 
because then I know. The reason I do this is if I drop a piece, I know which block it's from. And that way also when I have the block done, I know which block it is so that I don't have to go back and look or label it with something else. And then I'm going to mark for focus fabric versus background. The background in the book is the cream color. So that means that the background is actually the circles and the focus fabric is the big four and a half inch square. So I mark my focus fabric with a dot. So I'm going to mark it with a dot. And that's the end of this bag sort for this block. I'm going to take my baggie and a label mark B1 and put all five of these pieces into one bag and move on to the next block. So flip the page to B2 and I've already found this one so that goes here. So we're gonna find eight different pieces so seven more of those which are very obviously fit that and these guys that very obviously fit that. So I've got all of my pieces for B2 laid out. I'm going to label them. And for a block like this, the labeling is additionally important because if you get these flipped around, they're not going to fit. So you need four of them that are this way and four of them that are the other way in order to have this block go together correctly. So if you put this on the, if you flip it the other way, you get, you get this, but then I don't have, this is what's supposed to be glued to the fabric. So that's why you want to make sure that you've got the, you know, the left hand, right hand thing figured out. So the focus fabric is going to be, every other one is going to be background and then focus fabric. So background, fo focus, background, focus, so on and so forth. And then the one above it is going to be opposite. So this is focus, so that's background. So this is focus. This is focus. This is focus, and this is focus. So I've got those all labeled. I don't have a directional fabric, so I don't need to label for directional. If you have a directional fabric, you need to decide how you're gonna handle that. When I did on my first quilt, I'm, I had it like going as a radiation out, but however you wanna do it, this is the time to mark it on your block. I'm gonna bag this up and I'll be able to go on to B3. So B3 has two different kinds of pieces. You've got this center pie piece and the outer ring. So I've got these obviously just sitting right here because I sorted them as I got them out. So I will lay these out and then these are the pie pieces. And then I can label those. Okay, so now we're going to label these B3. Okay, so the focus fabric for B3, same kind of thing as B2. You've got opposites, and then this is gonna be background, and this is gonna be focus, and this is gonna be focus. Mark your directional if you have a directional fabric. Bag it up, and we'll go to B4. So B4 is next, and this is the first modified block that we come across. So we're gonna work from the booklet. Giant square, there's only one in the bag. We're going to stick that there and then we've got, there's two thicknesses here on here. You've got these and these and these are the same thickness as this and then you got this little corner thing. So keep in mind, yes they're different lengths but the thicknesses are different which will help you find them better because there's only four of this thickness which is these guys over in the corner yeah okay so I got these four they're gonna fit there and then I've got all these other ones over here that are thinner and I'm not sure if they all go to this this is where my stiletto comes in because it's easier to place them that way got this one and if I build one corner to make sure that I have the correct pieces it's just going to be the same on the other three. And then this one. I don't know if that's right or not. Oh, yeah. 
looks different when it's not on the paper. And then we've got little corners. We got a whole pile of little corners here. So these are the rest of my corner pieces over here. And then I'm gonna have triangles. So first of all, we gotta find the right size triangle for the piece. This is too big. And then what I do is over here, because this is too big, I wanna compare the rest of these. This one is considerably smaller. I'm gonna try this one out here. And it looks to be the correct size. So we are gonna try this out. So that's my correct size corner. So I'm gonna take this back off. So I'm gonna find three more that are this size by the same technique. So I'm gonna line this up and that's, and you wanna be, for triangles throughout all of these bag sorts, you wanna be very picky because sometimes slightly off is still off. So this one is slightly bigger, which I bet you it's this one, but that doesn't mean it is, but yes it is. So I'm gonna go through here and find all these pieces and then lay out the rest of my corners. So I've got all my pieces for B4 laid out. I've got extra pieces too. I've got four of these. These are all exactly the same size. So I'm going to set these aside. I think they're for B6 because B6 has got a lot of issues. There's three of these that don't fit at all. I think there should be four, but we'll find out. So I'm going to label each one of these. If you have directional fabric, again, this is when you want to do it after you label the number. So now we're going to label the focus fabric. The focus fabric is going to be in the picture. If I can move this without getting these moved. So pretend that this outside edge is not here because it's not here on this. So we're going to have the middle square be focus fabric. And then the next stripe is background focus fabric. And then the corner triangles are also focus fabric. So you're going to have the wider piece and the corner triangle have your focus fabric on it. And again, label for directional. So I'm going to bag these up and I will move on to B5. So now we're up to B5 and we have four diamonds that are going to be applique on. So I've got these four diamonds here. I'm just going to put them up there. And then you got four squares. So we're going to lay these on here. And then We've got five different bars, and they're going to be a little bit different lengths. Should be, that's the longest one, obviously. And then you got two shorter bars of the same thickness here. So let me lay these pieces out, and then I can label them. So I've got the B5s laid out. And it's a matter of labeling them at this point. So now for the focus fabrics, the only ones on here that are the focus fabrics are these little squares that you eventually will applique the background diamonds onto and everything else is background. So now I'm going to bag this up and move on to the final block is B6. So now we're on to B6, which is the last block of this bag. And there's a lot of pieces left because there's a lot of pieces in B6. So we have the modified, so we're going to go to the booklet and work on this one. First thing we have is one bar, and that goes from the middle. I'm going to work from my inside out, and I've got my double-ended arrows, and there's two with no arrows on the end. So I'm going to just place these where they go, and then we can be able to label them. So here's all the pieces for B6, and now I get to label all of these little tiny pieces. So all my pieces are labeled. They scooted around a little bit as I was labeling them. So I want to mark my focus fabric, which are the triangles. So you got these in the center, and then the ones out here. That's eight total. And then you've got these 
here on the edges, and then that's 12, and then the corners. So all the triangles for this block are the focus fabric and all the bars are background. So now I will bag this up and label it for B6 and I will be done with the first bag sort of the row B EPP kit.